So, today is supposed to be the start of phase one, um, the deconstruction of this bathroom, and that has to start with um, capping off the water supply to the installations like shower, sink, radiator and toilet. And the problem I have is that this toilet right here at the moment is the only one working in the house and that's not ideal because this absolute piece of crap with its uh, crank flush handle of course is now broken. And looking inside there into this overcomplicated mess um, I absolutely have no intention to fix any of this. This is a bloody sideshow. Thankfully, we have another toilet in the house that is not seeing any use because it's not installed properly. But the system, which has a dual flush or a more modern button flush system, works perfectly. So I'm going to swap those out because under the circumstances, that's a lot less work. So let's get the water supply off of this cistern here. So it's coming straight out of the floor there. And um, most of the um, water pipes, like the peak water pipes here, are half inch. So that should also be a half inch compression pipe, uh, compression fitting. I've turned the water off already. The main water supply in the pump house. Just fit this towel around there. Because there's probably a little water left in that pipe and I'm going to try to, to wrench that off. Next then would be the um, kind of like the wing nuts that um, connect the system to the pan and there's probably also some bolts in the back here or screws that fit this rather badly to the wall and then this should come off. This is going to work the way I imagine it. And it comes up easy enough. There's definitely some water leaking out now. Come on. Yeah, and that's it. Okay. Not as bad as I thought. Now, because I'm not going to reconnect anything to it, I'm going to take this blanking nut here, and I really only need the cap itself because the O-ring and the compression fitting itself are already on there. So this is the only bit that's needed. Um, I, ideally, I, I really shouldn't need any kind of like um, PDFE type around the thread, like the thread here, because like it's the O-ring that makes the seal. So what I might do is just wrap some PDFE tape around that O-ring and seal it off or ensure a seal that way. Right then. Sit straight. Let's not over tighten this because I don't want to destroy anything, hopefully. This will make the seal that I need. Right then, <laughs> off with the wing nut. Yeah, a number two. And judging on the color of this, the corrosion, there's some leak there too. Actually, maybe that is where the leak is. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the only other fix things that um, hold the system up are those wall, yeah, and there's the wall screws, one there and one there. And it's a lot less complicated in the system here. Um, let's see if this, oh yeah, it should disconnect like 
so perfect. Uh, it's a pretty tight space. I'm probably not going to get in there with a screwdriver. Bloody hell. Okay, well. Yeah, small one that has this thing wobbled. Yeah, that's loose as well. Yep, there we go. So that's, that's all that's needed to get that system off. Now I get the other one downstairs off as well, swap them out. The thing I'm gonna do is, I'm going to untighten that because I'd like to keep this armored, armored piece of hose or pipe or whatever this is. Um, so because I don't have to cap off the water supply here because I want to keep this one working. And that should hopefully be a little bit easier. Other than that, Again, two wing nuts down there, and two screws uh, fastening this to the wall. So hopefully, this should be a straightforward enough job. tested and um, no more no leaking or anything except here which is why we put this tray here because there's a very slow leak which is coming from inside the tank so there is a component in there that um, is sitting on the inside of a tank with a rubber gasket and that thing isn't isn't sealing properly and this was also the cause of the leak 
um, for this system in its original place upstairs. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that component out and uh, probably going to replace the rubber gasket with one from the other system that I'm not, not going to be using anymore. And that should then hopefully um, stop the leak. Yeah, and that pretty much is it with this little sideshow. Almost taken half a day now. And meanwhile, the water is back on, and the seal here is holding, so that's a plus. Right, with the toilet business out of the way, I'm gonna make some room to maneuver for myself in here. And that means I'm going to start with the shower enclosure. Yeah, and that's one gone enclosure. Probably the easiest thing of this whole project. And by the way, this is what the inside of an electric shower looks like. So we have exposed wiring, water supply coming in here. Yeah, that's what it is. And up here is the safety switch. So if I pull this, Light goes on there, so this has power still. So I'm not going to touch any of this um, until I found the main breaker in the breaker cabinet downstairs that turns the power to all of this off. And I'm going to take this off the ceiling, um, sever the connection there because then it's safe to work on the shower over here. Get the uh, the wires disconnected and um, put a blanking cap onto that water pipe. Looks like there is some sort of semblance of insulation on that wall. Now I have to get this fitting off and then apply another one of these stop ends and then this shouldn't be leaking at all. Alright. It's a copper, that's a piece of copper pipe here. Anyway, the uh, olive is there. Just gonna give it a quick clean, just with my fingers. I'm gonna wrap some PDV tape around it. 
and then just apply apply the stop end to that. Right. All right, that's pretty tight. I don't want to tighten it too much because there's too much risk to break it, but that's fine. I will leave it like that and uh, go on with the other pipes. And the obvious next choice is the toilet system supply. seal. Next up's the sink, which is going to be more of the same. So this one's already loose. 
but nothing's leaking is encouraging. I'll try the other side. So this water here is just what was left in the radiator itself, the pipes, um, and the pressure because the heating is off at the moment. And that is that. Excellent. So I think the radiator will just take off the wall now or else I won't have enough room here to fit in my stop ends. Theoretically if I tug this off now, that should be it. Uh, almost. This guy here is still hanging on by a thread. Yeah, I think that's it now. There we go. Would you look at that? That black goop just came out of that radiator. Don't know if that's normal. Anyway, I'm just going to put the last two stop ends that I have on these two pipes here. And um, hopefully, once the water and the heating system is switched back on, There'll be no leaks. Now this one here sits way too close to the end of the pipe. That should be sitting about a centimetre away from it. Don't really want to do it. Not even sure if I can with this distance. I think I'm even less comfortable with the thought of this thing staying where it is. I'll just give myself a little more room to maneuver. That's going to be pretty damn tight. But we work with what we have. So, insert. Ah, what an absolute crap job I'm doing here, but again, this is just a stopgap. No, I'm just going to give this a quick tidy and then I'll switch the water back on, see where I stand. So all the cold water supply has been switched back on and so for the three cold water pipes here are dry. Just check it with a bit of toilet paper. There is no leaks there, so that's good. Um, which leaves the ultimate test. Switching the hot water supply on. 
and see if the hot water pipe for the sink as well as the the radiator pipes uh, remain without leaks as well. If that's the case, then I call the first phase a success. Fast forwarding to the next day, the hot water pipes have stayed dry as well. There is no leaks around the stop ends, so I can now continue with the rest of the uninstall of the installation items in here. The most obvious bit, of course, is the sink. Um, there is only the waste pipe here that needs to be disconnected, and then that looks like a screw joint. And I think there is a few screws. Yeah, there's one here, so one on the other side, probably. This bit here is fixed to the floor with two screws. I'm not sure if the sink is just resting on it or if there's more um, more actual mechanical connections, but I'll find that out. Other than that, this should be straightforward, and this should also be the first item to go out of here, because then that will give me more room to remove the toilet. Now for situations like this, it's good to have newspaper on there that can be scrunched up and stuffed into the open waste pipe, because otherwise that smell is going to be pretty erroneous. It's the sink on. Next step, toilet.
So I just tied it and screw to the floor with four screws, two in the front and two in the back. And then of course, there's the pan connector right there that connects the actual toilet to the soil pipe. And removing this is something that I'm really, really looking forward to. Wow. So this screw has rusted through completely. That's reassuring. Same on the other side. It seems to have been one well installed toilet. Now I'm looking forward to disconnecting it even more. Not. Yeah, and it's four screws broken clean off. Excellent. Not sure I'm actually going to use this footage depending on what's coming out of that pipe. Well, smell actually isn't as bad as I thought. Now I'm just going to make sure to clog it up with newspaper. Unfortunately, that is not going to be the last that I'm going to see of that saw pipe. Okay, so maybe not as bad as I thought, but given my bottom rung expectations of anything in this place, it doesn't actually mean much. Now moving on to hopefully more palatable tasks, removal of the tiles around the old shower cabin before I rip out the shower tray itself and see what's underneath. Now let's see if I can pull all of these tiles off without too much breakage because um, the fewer tiles break and the less stuff I have to sweep it off the floor. Right, the problem is that now um, the ground is holding the tiles together um, so if I pull one off too far then there's a chance that the rest come with it so I'll just uh, quickly try and cut out the ground to be able to pull off the tiles individually. I imagine that um, before I can lift the tray out, I have to somehow disconnect the waste pipe that's there. I'll try with the screwdriver first, see what that gets me.
going to go closer in a moment, but that is rot. And this one is just a tad on the heavy side. Come on. So, this discoloration here and the black there on the what's essentially just normal plasterboard, not even wet room plasterboard. Yeah, that's all right. Can't say I'm particularly surprised this about represents the quality and craftsmanship that I've come to expect. All right, let's get this cleaned up. That's black mold, definitely black mold. bit unsure if I should take this ball out first or remove the, uh, the glass fiber ball uh, from the wall. I think I'm going to start with the wall because as I've said it's glass fiber and uh, even being kind of like a minute without the mask in here kind of makes you feel all itchy inside so this is going to come out first. Now one thing I'm making a habit out of is to clean as I go because that always gives me a tidy work area and makes the cleaning work at the end of everything less of an effort. Okay. 
we're getting a bit tired of the wall business, so I'm going to have a crack at these tiles. insulation in it so now I can take a look at the floorboards and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the multi-tool with, uh, with a special um, wood saw attachment and then I'll be cutting right along the 2x2 two two stud work because um, the stud work itself is resting on the old floorboards so I'm not going to take those out I'm going to leave the little bits of uh, floorboard in between the joists and the stud work as some sort of spacer because if I wanted to remove all of the floors I would have to remove all of the stud work too or leave it unsupported i.e. suspended and I don't wa want to do that so I'll just be cutting along the studs there Anyway. 
and that was the last of the floorboards. There is only one more step to do, and that's taking the door out. And that really was the last piece. Now this uh, ensuite bathroom has been completely uninstalled. And because I do like a tidy, clean uh, work area or work site, I'm going to give this all a good sweep, get the debris and the dust out of uh, all the nooks and crannies, so that when I do get started on the reconstruction, I have a good, clean room to work in. And while the time left of me cleaning up is running, maybe a few words in conclusion of this video. Um, in terms of straight work hours, this has taken me between 16 and 20 work hours altogether. No materials cost yet, those will come later. And in the next video of this uh, series, I'm going to take a savvy of the bathroom, take a look at the pipe work, the wiring, the joists and um, the stud work, just to see where I'll need to put in some more work before I can actually get started with the reinstallation. But for this time, we'll leave it here.